Hello, everybody. This is Derek with Reef Automation. Here's another top 10 of the top 10 Apex commands. In this video, we're going to go over some of the top 10 commands that Apex has, a little bit on how to use them, and why I think they should be in this order. So let's get started. The first command is the sec command, number 10. So the sec command uh, is a very basic command, and what this will do for you is allow you to enable and disable an outlet all the time. So it's a basically an always on, always off. Set will also assign a off or on state to an outlet so that you can program something else to override it. Again, we have tutorials on all of these, so take a look at those. The ninth in our list is the fallback command. Now the fallback command is similar to that of the set command in that it enables and disables the outlet, but it only will enable and disable the fallback command if indeed the EB8 or the EB832 or any of your power bars were to get disconnected to the Apex brain in any fashion. So for instance, if you were to unplug the Aquabus cable from your EB8, the fallback command will then hit. And usually what happens when it's fallback is the AB8 will flash in an amber color to indicate that it's not connected to the uh, apex brain. And therefore your fallback command will work. Um, an association or an example of this would be, let's say you have a return pump that for some reason, let's say it was to get disconnected um, on the Aquabus cable, you want that return bump. You want that return pump to continue on, so you do a fallback on. But there are some things that you would not want, such as maybe a heater or chiller, if you were to get disconnected, not to turn on. So this might be where you'd use fallback off. So eight on our list is the if outlet command. Now what this means is it will associate or look at another outlet in the program. So for instance, if outlet one was on, or in this case, if outlet light was on, then I want you to turn off this one. This is very useful if you have multiple items that you want to turn on without having to do a multiple virtual outlet. So for instance, if I had three or four lights in the system programmed into four outlets, I would do if outlet one, if outlet two, if outlet three are on, then on, and that way, the fourth outlet would then turn on when the other three are on, and you can do the same programming on those as well. Number seven is the if power command. There's a couple of things you can use with this. The if power command will indicate if the apex loses power via the 12 volt input, and then it will do something. So for instance, if your power was to go out and you set this up for battery backup, which I have an entire tutorial on, then you would get an alert, or let's say you wanted a chiller, for instance, to turn off if your power was to go off or something that would drain the battery backup. You might want to do an if power then off. Another one is if power EB8 or EB832. Now what this means is if the EB832 was to lose power. So let's say your Apex brain still has power, but your um, EB8 or your power bar does not have power. This will alert you to tell you that you have lost power. Another one is watts. So this is to tell you if you have a certain amount of watts on a specific device. Now this can be by outlet or it can be by the entire unit. If your wattage was to go down or up, depending on the device, then on or off would occur. Number six is the basic if open or close command. So for instance, if you have a switch or a leak detector or possibly an optical sensor, you would use the open or close command. If switch one, for instance, was to open, then on, or if switch one was to close, then on. Very basic, if open or close command, if something was open, then, hap then something happened. If something is closed, then something happened. The next one is the if greater than or less than. You usually use this with probes. Uh, you can use this with a trident and with alkalinity or calcium or anything that is an input device, you can do this. So for instance, if pH was greater than nine, I want this to turn on. Usually you use that in alarm state. That's an example. Um, let's say if your pH was to go greater than something, you might want to turn off maybe your calc calcwasser dripper. So this would be where you would use this command. 
So number four is the defer command. Now the defer command is a very important tool and is highly underutilized by most programmers for their Apex. It's a very good feature to have, especially when you're using a optical sensor or anything that potentially can cause things to turn off and on a lot of times. You might want to defer that. Now how defer works is if you defer it, for instance, in this example, five minutes, that means that the on command will not turn on for five minutes. So what that means is let's say you had something to enable the on command, but you wanted to defer it for five minutes, this is where you would do that. Also, you can do it on the off command. So let's say you have a skimmer that you don't want to turn off right away. You might want to wait one minute till it shuts off. This is where you'd use possibly a defer command. So that's number four on our list. Number three is the if time command. Great command. This will provide you with an on or off during certain periods of time during the day. This is great for lighting. This is great for maybe a refugium light. This could be great for possibly a scrubber or a algae uh, reactor if you want the light to turn on during certain periods of time. This would be where you'd use that time command. It could be if time, and it uses 24 hours. So if you want it to turn off at 1 o'clock, you'd use 13 instead of 12. Um, and again, it'll turn uh, that particular device on at a certain time. And then if you want to turn it off, you could do an if time and then on or if off. Um, if time then off command would provide you with the off. So if time command, a really important command, and that's number three on our list. Number two is the OSC command. A lot of people don't know how to use the OSC command. I did a complete tutorial on the OSC command, so I'm not going to go into it in detail, but it's a very important command that Apex provides, especially if you want to do something like a dosing pump where you want it to come on and off throughout the day, uh, you would use an OSC. And OSC is really important because um, there's a lot of things out there that you might want to turn off and on throughout the day, and this is just one example. Now, how it works is the OSC will look at the first statement and it will turn it on or off depending on your then on at the back here. So at the end it says then on. So if it says then on, the first command is off, the second command is on, and the third command is off. If it said then off, the first command is on, the second command is off, and the third command is on. And therefore what it does is it, in this case, would turn off the outlet for 10 seconds, then it would turn on the outlet for 30 seconds, then it would turn off the outlet for zero seconds, and it would repeat itself. So then it would turn off again for 10 more seconds, on for 30 seconds, then off. So in this case, it basically will turn off for 10 seconds, on for 30 seconds, on off for 10 seconds, on for 30 seconds. So again, a very useful command and highly underutilized. And number one on our list, and probably my favorite command, is the when statement and the error command. This is a really great combination of commands you use. So how it's, how it's done, and I did another tutorial on this, is when something's been on for a long period of time or too long, such as possibly an ATO pump, let's say it's been on for three minutes, I want it to shut off because I don't want it to overflow. And let's say one of my optical sensors were to fail. This is kind of a backup fail safe that will turn off the ATO pump. And then the configuration or the error on the right there says if error light then on would mean if the when command was satisfied, meaning the when command hit three minutes, you will then get an alert if you use the if error command. Now you can use the if error command with a lot of Apex devices. You can do the if error command with a core pump. You could do an if error with a trident. There's a number of built-in error commands that the Apex commands or the Apex devices have themselves. But if you want to use this with a pre-existing outlet, you combine that with a when statement to provide you with an error if a when was to be satisfied. Again, I have tutorials on all of these statements, but these are my top 10 most utilized commands and some of them not so utilized um, and how I figure out what are the best commands to use and what are the my favorite commands to use. And I think one being the when and error command is one of my favorite commands. So hopefully you like this video. And if you did, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe below. I uh, look forward to providing you with some more top tens. But uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.